Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are starting chapter four today and it's on contextual applications of differentiation. Today's topic is 4.1 where we're talking about interpreting the meaning of the derivative in context. Enjoy today's notes. All right, for section 4.1, interpreting the derivative in context, today's lesson is gonna be a short one. Uh, we are mostly reviewing and reinforcing information from units two and three uh, as we prepare and work through these applications of differentiation. So let's start off with a recall. So we wanna see what remember. The slope between two points can be written a couple of different ways, but one way that we might refer to that is delta y divided by delta x, the change in y divided by the change in x. And this little uh, triangle, you know, this is what's called a delta, it's a Greek letter. Uh, and it just means change in this context. So the change in y divided by the change in x would be the slope between two points. And if we're talking about variables, uh, in general, we say that it is the change in the dependent variable, the dependent variable, divided by the change in the independent variable. The general way that we know which one is which is that the independent variable is normally the input of the function. So I'll just sort of highlight that in general, if we're talking about the independent variable, that is gonna be the input of our function generally, while the dependent variable is gonna be the output of our function because it depends on the input. So uh, this leads us into a conversation around the units for the derivative. So the derivative of f of x is going to be whatever the unit for f is divided by the unit for x. So in this case, x is our input, that is our independent variable, that is just the x, while the whole output of this f of x is going to be our dependent variable. So, so again, input versus uh, output or independent versus dependent. Um, in general, you know, we could see some examples of this, but one of those, you know, might be, for example, if we're talking about the height of a function with respect to time, if we're talking about something that's like changing height over time, we might say that it's like h of t, where in this case, the h, uh, you know, the h might be, you know, let's say like inches or feet, and the time might be in seconds. So if we're thinking about which of these is the uh, independent one, that's gonna be our input, that's our time. So our independent variable would be the time t here, while the whole h of t, that output, is going to be the dependent variable. Uh, and that would say, again, that might be like units of height. So like we might be talking about inches or centimeters or feet, uh, depending upon whatever the context of the problem is. So generally, if I were talking about H of T changing, we would be talking about the units of H divided by the units of T in this case. So let's get into this. So we've got if F prime of X is greater than zero, then what do we know about F of X? Well, if f prime of x is greater than zero, that tells us, you know, f prime of x is the derivative of f. So that means the derivative, aka the slope of the tangent line, is positive. So if the slope of the tangent line of f is positive, that means that f of x is increasing. Generally, you know, we might have something that like looks like this, where if we drew our tangent line at any point on here, we might notice that it has a positive slope, right? The derivative at that point is positive. And the only way that that's going to be possible, if the derivative is always posi positive, is going to be if that function is increasing the whole time. So our f of x there is increasing, or rather our f prime of x uh, is greater than zero, so f of x therefore is increasing. So that's useful to know. What happens though if, if the derivative is negative? If f prime of x is negative, again, that means the slope of the tangent line on f of x is negative. So we have a function where the slope is negative. So any real point on, on this function, for example, if we draw our tangent line, we have a slope that is negative. What does that tell us about f of x? Well, that means that f of x is going to be decreasing. So we can take some conclusions about the original function f of x if we know things about f prime of x. In general, 
If f prime is positive, we know that f of x is increasing. And if f prime of x is negative, we know that f of x is decreasing. Those are all really useful things for us to know as we think about analyzing functions. Um, and so let's try this. So number one, uh, Mr. Sullivan wants Mr. Brust to finish creating his packets in Algebra 2. The number of packets Mr. Brust has completed is modeled by P of W, where W is measured in weeks. Interpret P of 10 is equal to 1 in the context of the problem. And then B, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about this derivative here. So this is the part, again, where we're, we're reviewing really the beginning of Chapter 2 and, and uh, a little bit in Chapter 3 about, like, what does the derivative actually mean in terms of the context of the problem? This is a super common uh, free response question on the AP exam. Normally they have one or two, uh, maybe in the even in the, the multiple choice where they're asking you to choose from some different pr pr prompts. But it's really important to pay attention to what we know in terms of the units of the problem and what whether they're talking about the derivative or not. Notice first off in A, they're saying P of 10 is equal to one. And if we look at B, they have, they're saying now P prime of 39 is equal to four. The fact that one of these is talking about a derivative is going to make the statement that I write different from this one here, which is simply talking about an input of 10 and an output of 1. Here we're talking about an input of 39 for the derivative function is 4, so the setup of these two answers is going to naturally be a little bit different. So what does this mean for, for A in the context of this problem? Well, we know that uh, P of W is the number of packets Mr. Bur uh, Brust has completed, and we know that W is measured in weeks. So, so those are the two pieces of information that we need, tying this really back into our dependent and independent uh, variables here. Because W is the input, that means that uh, W the weeks is our independent variable, while the number of packets Mr. Brust is completing is depending on what week it is. So that is our output, this is our input. So how would we write this? Well, P of 10 is equal to one would mean that after 10 weeks, after 10 weeks, Mr. Brust has completed one packet. So notice here, uh, I'm really t I'm tying this also into the units of this problem. I'm not only uh, recognizing you know the numbers that are involved, the ten and the one, but I'm also tying it back to what we're talking about here. So ten weeks, right? So ten is the number of weeks, and the number of packets being completed. So that is being uh, referenced here in this problem as we are writing that. This is what our AP graders are looking for in this style of problem on the free response. How does that change when we have a P prime? Now we're not talking about just, you know, this is not, for example, after 39 weeks, Mr. Brust has completed four packets. Here, because we're talking about a derivative, we're talking about a rate. So we're gonna want to reference that this is now a, we're talking about a rate of change because that is, you know, in, in essence, what a derivative is. So what is this gonna look like? How's this gonna be different? So on specifically the 39th week, on the 39th week, uh, Mr. Brust, so tying it back to what the problem is, is discussing, uh, is making packets at a rate of four packets per week. Notice two things that are different in this, this example compared to A. So again, on the 39th week, Mr. Brust is making packets at a rate of four packets per week. I wanna highlight the two changes that have happened here. So first off, we added this phrase at a rate of, right? That is taking into account that this is a derivative here. So it's not just, you know, in the 39th week that, that he's making four packets, but in the 39th week, the rate is four packets because we're talking about a rate of change. Um, in addition, we noticed that in the previous one, it was just the units were one packet, but now we're saying actually that this is going to be four packets per week. And we're taking that into account once again because we're talking about a rate of change here. It's not just four, but the rate of change is four, which means that as uh, it's the number of packets changing with respect to time. Uh, and so these two look different in terms of their answers. In fact, I, I would generally say the AP exam probably is not gonna really ask you uh, 
questions in the form of A, right? This is a little bit more of review from like say algebra two, while this is the calculus piece, right? Can you interpret what a derivative means in terms of context, right? That is huge. Not only can you take a derivative, but do you know what it means? Uh, that is definitely something that the AP graders want to know when they're grading your AP exam. Let's try number two. So the rate at which Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards per year is modeled by B of T, where T is measured in years. So a couple things jump out to me uh, immediately when looking at this problem. First off, let's take a look at the units. So it's buying baseball cards per year. It's being modeled by that B of T. We also have uh, T is measured in years. But a key, key thing that I would not miss is that they're actually saying that, that this uh, B of T is a rate already. Like this is essentially like a derivative. It is a rate. And that also makes sense because they're saying it's baseball cards per year, right? It's something with respect to time. Um, and so it's already got a independent variable uh, being divided by the dependent variable in the setup of this. So how does this change? Well, we're going to need to take into account uh, if we're doing B of 3 is equal to 150, our answer in this case is going to look a little bit more like B in the previous problem where we're talking about this rate of change because this is a rate of change. So how would we write that? Well, so we're going to say on the third year, on the third year, again, tying into the units of this problem, Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards. at a rate of 150 baseball cards per year. So on the third year, Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards at a rate of 150 cards, baseball cards per year. And so how are we tying in what we know here? You know, because this was a rate problem where we referenced that uh, we're talking about a, at a rate. We also measured, uh, talked about the T being in years. So it's per year. And then our, uh, our dependent variable is going to be that those baseball cards. So tying that information into this, you know, Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards at a rate of 150 baseball cards per year. Okay, so B of three or B was a rate already. What happens now if we take the derivative of a rate? So in this case, we notice here that we have a derivative. And so we're really thinking that this is like a rate of a rate of change. And to me, this is sort of making me think of like second derivatives. So I'm in my head, I'm thinking, ooh, this is like a second derivative because we're talking about a rate of a rate. So how does this look in this particular problem? So on the fourth year, on the fourth year, Mr. Kelly, no, actually I'm gonna step back. So let's, let's not just jump into Mr. Kelly. So the rate, at which Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards is increasing. So it's increasing at a rate of 10 cards per year, per year. And that was not an accident. I intentionally wrote this per year, per year twice, right? Because the original rate was per year and we're doing the rate of the rate. So it's per year, per year. Or if we were thinking about this, you know, we might say that this is like 10 cards per year squared for thinking about units. So these would be uh, sort of uh, equivalent in terms of, in terms of writing this. So 10 cards per year per year would be the same thing uh, written in that way. And if this is the free response of the AP exam and you're, you're handwriting this, you know, those would be uh, equivalent to write. Um, the last thing I want to sort of mention on this, right, we're saying that the rate is changing, right? The rate is increasing. 
So the rate is what we had in the original problem, that's our b of 3. Because we're taking the derivative, now we're just referencing that it's increasing here. So we're going back to the beginning of these notes here, when we know that the derivative is positive, that that is increasing, and if this derivative were negative, then it would be decreasing. So the fact here that they told me that the derivative was 10, because it's positive, I know that that rate is increasing at a rate of 10 cards per year per year. So really tying that in to, uh, to this particular statement uh, in, in trying to think about what this means in the terms of the context of the problem. The fact that that rate is positive is, I'm gonna say increasing. If this rate were negative, then I would say it's decreasing there. Um, but that is it for today's notes. Really just a lot of context, uh, interpreting those derivatives in, in context. If I were you, I would try the practice problems that are uh, here. As usual, I've posted the solutions for these, so check your work, and then try out that mastery check. Have a great rest of your day.